as we are celebrating the feast of Saint Matthew, who is credited with the authorship of the first gospel, is written in Hebrew, and his audience was uh, Jewish converts, and he tried to present Jesus, that genealogy of Jesus, and he tried to present Jesus as the uh, the son of David, coming from that. Um, uh, descendant of David, and also uh, he, through laws and prophets, if you read Matthew chapter 5, there we'll see, uh, to, he just uh, presented Jesus came, he, he's to culminate it. Jesus culminated the laws and the prophets. And we have beautiful readings. Oh my goodness. All our life we can meditate it. The first thing we need to understand are tax collectors. Those days, and even today, tax, none of us likes to hear about tax. I think someone was saying only two things that are certain in this country. One is a death, another one is a tax. So now, here, just imagine those days was totally different. Tax collectors considered among the people who are the sinners. Now here Jesus is meeting this person or Matthew had an encounter with this, uh, a, his creator, though he did not realize at that point of time. So Jesus, and immediately Jesus said, follow me. We do not know why Jesus said that. But Jesus knows everything. So Jesus called Matthew, follow me. And immediately, that's beautiful. One way, humility, no, obedience without delay. It's a sign of humility. So he followed Jesus. And Jesus sat with him in his house and had food with him. Especially we also need to know a little bit of history like ancient days. If you are having food with someone, having sharing a drink and a food, that means it's some sort of like a covenantal relationship. That solidarity with means you are agreeing everything you're doing. It's something deeper than uh, today. Sometimes we don't even mean like, okay, I'm, I'm going to have, a, you know, dine with the summon. But those days it was something more uh, meaningful. I mean, they had a different meaning. Of course, that meaning applies today as well. So now, and Jesus is, not only really Jesus just called him, but Jesus is meeting where he is where he was with and other tax collectors, the problem increased. Not only this one tax collector now, not only one sinner, other sinners also came. So in that context, in this situation, Pharisees, they started questioning how this should happen. They said, the Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now, we need to hear what Jesus is telling us today. That is not just 2,000 years ago, even today. Even today, sometimes this mentality has not changed. Sometimes people can also say like, hey, how that priest could associate with so-and-so person? How he could go and visit to this house or that house? Or even not only that, how, just forget about priests, even we can say to each other, how, how, how can you associate with the, that person? Do you trust that person? Do you know anything about that person? You know, there's no change. So here in this circumstance, what Jesus is telling, we need to hear. Jesus said, those who are well do not need physician, but the sick do. Jesus was very gentle. And Jesus said, go and learn the meaning of the words 
I desire mercy, not sacrifice. This is beautiful word of God. Go and learn what Jesus was quoting the Old Testament, which is Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. Maybe it's easy to remember. Hosea 6, 6. That word of God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Do we really understand this even today? And sometimes, as I've already shared many times, those days people were so ritualistic, uh, legalistic, and we have so many things, you know, looking what's happening around, not the real meaning. But Jesus said, I want mercy, not sacrifice. Maybe Jesus is coming and saying today's like his policy. That sometimes, you know, like the chairman of the company comes and speaks like, hey, this is the company policy. But Jesus is coming and speaking. The, the policy of the kingdom of God, mercy, not sacrifice. Then Jesus said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Very clear. Jesus came to call sinners, not the righteous. If you and me say, I am righteous, Luke 18, 9 to 14, that there also we see the Pharisees praying like, I'm a good person, we are doing charitable thing, and I'm fasting. I'm also not the person who is standing behind me. So if we say I'm a just person, I'm, a, I'm, I'm good, and Jesus is not afraid to tell us, hey, I did not come for you. I'm not here for you. But the moment we say, Lord, I'm a sinner, how mercy on me. The beginning of the Mass, we entered this beautiful sanctuary with that act. I confess, or how mercy on me. Then the Lord will say to us, I am for you. I died for you. I am ready to anything for you, provided you acknowledge. Not only you, you and me acknowledge, Lord, I'm a sinner. That's why St. Paul said in 1 Timothy 1.15, he said, Jesus Christ came to save sinners, and I am the greatest among them. He was not saying, I'm, you know, I'm in the middle. He said, I'm the greatest. St. Augustine said, you name it, I did it. I'm a sinner. So, I don't want to preach long, but the point is, don't forget, please, 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 we should always remember, God is a merciful God. He wants mercy. He wants not sacrifice. He just came to call sinners, not the upright, righteous, not the righteous, but sinners. Perhaps during this Mass, we can pray for to have a great conversion of heart, to have that attitude, to that disposition of heart, and to have that grace to show mercy to every person we meet without judging. If we do that, one day we will be able to praise God with all other saints including St. Matthew.